Over the next 15 minutes, I'm going to try and show you how we can use Microsoft Power BI with Sims to provide much better analysis than we've been able to provide previously. Well, what is Microsoft Power BI? Well, it's an analytics service. What do we mean by analytics? Well, really, in a sense, we do mean fancy graphs. We're very used to graphs that are just um, basically diagrams and are not interactive at all. But Power BI gives us a set of graphs that we can interact with, not only individually, but as a collection on a page. So the whole page of various different graphs works together to give us a better understanding of our data. It was originally created uh, as an offshoot of Excel in 2015, so it's relatively new software. There's a wide variety of graphs, tables and matrices that all link together, as I said, to form a page within a report where all the graphs are linked. You can create a lot of visualizations without needing to learn new skills. But Power BI is a really deep and a wide ranging solution that does allow more experienced users to go even deeper and get more out of the product. It's a little bit like Excel. Even a beginner user can create a simple spreadsheet, but to create a really complex spreadsheet, you need some really specialized skills. So it offers something both for the beginner and for the more experienced user. It's also suitable for primary and secondary schools because we can link it to our Sims databases for both. This is really what we're used to with Sims. You might find some of these reports are already familiar to you. They're the ones that have been available to us for many years now. And they are very good. And some of some of those discover reports there that you can see one an example of one on the screen there are very, very useful. But with Microsoft Power BI, we can take it deeper. So why should we use Microsoft Power BI? Well, I've said before that it's flexible. There's over 30 different types of visualization that we can create with Power BI. It also has a, a link that we can create to our existing SIM system. The link is actually quite a simple link in many ways. It's based on text files, CSV text files. So there's nothing complicated about it. We use a set of SIMS reports to generate the text files, and then Microsoft Power BI picks those text files up and analyzes them for us. The creation of those text files in SIMS can be completely automated. So the whole process can continue uh, without intervention um, on a daily basis, a weekly basis, termly basis, whatever you need it to be. The other reason why we should use Microsoft Power BI is because the reports that we then create are easy to share. Um, they're easy to share within a group of senior leaders uh, and they're shareable over a web browser. I'm going to do a demonstration in a moment and you'll see that I'm using a web browser to host the Microsoft Power BI report. And that means I can run the report from any web browser with an internet connection. With that ease of sharing, of course, comes a danger. The danger is that they'll be shared with the wrong person. So Microsoft Power BI also has lots of security built into it to make sure it's secure and we can't uh, allow uh, external users to see data that we don't want them to see. So it's built on security. It's actually built on the same uh, platform as the online hosted version of Sims. It uses the same Microsoft platform to host Microsoft Power BI reports as well. And the final reason on this slide is compatibility. All our uh, reports in this example are generated from data that was originally created using sims but if your school uses a different module for behavior for assessment or heaven forbid maybe uses a different management information system entirely something other than sims microsoft power bi will still work so long as your other piece of software can create a text file microsoft power bi can work with it
So I'm going to do the demo in a moment, but before I start the demo, I just want to reinforce the fact that we have a two sides to Microsoft Power BI. We've got the Power BI desktop version, which is a little bit like Excel. It's a free download actually from Microsoft, so you can download the program, the executable file, and install it on your local PC. And it's the Power BI desktop uh, uh, software where we probably would do most of the development of these reports. But for a smaller school, Power BI desktop might be all you really need. Certainly a smaller primary school or even a large primary school, um, they might find that all the analysis needs are covered by the Power BI desktop version. It's okay if you're just not too worried about sharing the reports. Uh, it does allow you to create the reports as, as, as static PDF files if you wish. Uh, but if you're quite happy gathering a small group of people around your PC that's running Power BI Desktop, you can show them all these visualizations just on your desktop. And again, I mentioned before, but Power BI Desktop is a free download from Microsoft. It's not very often we get something free from Microsoft. The other half of Power BI is what's called the Power BI Service. And this is located on the internet. So this is accessed via your browser. What happens is that when we've developed our reports using Power BI Desktop, we then upload it to the Power BI service. And it's from the Power BI service that we can then share that report safely with our colleagues, perhaps in the senior management team, perhaps wider within the school. This uses the Microsoft Secure Cloud, um, the same one that um, Sims Hosted uh, uses. Again, it's free for a single user, but as soon as you do want to share your reports, and you will do because that's the main advantage to using the uh, Power BI service, as soon as you want to share those reports, you need to buy a license that still costs less than £2 per user per year. So it's still very good value. Sorry, £2 per user per month, but it's still very good value. So I'm going to go into the live demonstration. Here's an example of the first page of a Power BI report. And you'll notice I've called this one headline statistics. This is on the front page. So this is the most important statistics for our school. At the bottom there, if you look down here, we've got other pages that are accessible as tabs. For example, we have one here called attendance that looks like this. I'll come back to this one in a moment. But for now, just concentrate on the headline statistics. And you'll see we've got various different graphs headlined here that tell us the number of SEN pupils. The whole number of pupils in the school uh, is, is on this particular tile here. And we've got pupil premium numbers, EAL numbers, ethnicity statistics, and so on. You'll notice that we've got bar charts. So here's a year group bar chart. And you'll see for year 7, 8, and 9, we've just got a simple uh, chart that tells us how many pupils are in there. But for year 10, 11 and 12, we've, we've put some more information in there. And for example, we're showing that we have 24 low ability pupils in year 10, 70 middle ability pupils in, in year 10, and 65 high ability pupils in year 10. And straight away, there's a noticeable difference between the makeup of year 10 and year 11. And we can see we have substantially more high achievers in our current year 10 than we do in our year 11. We have, here we have an ethnicity graph, and this is called a tree map. And the relative size of the squares there indicates the relative numbers of pupil, pupils in each of those ethnic groups. We have a gauge here that gives the whole school attendance at 96.03%. And also a split by year group, the percentage attendance year by year, down at the bottom there. So, this is an interesting graph in its own right, but it's made more interesting um, by the interactivity that Power BI gives us. For example, we have 478 girls. If I click on the bar that represents those girls, you'll see all the other graphs now adjust themselves to show what percentage of the other graphs uh, consist of girls in our school. And if I click on boys, we'll get the same adjustment made there. So that's an example of the interactivity that these graphs give us. And it's a very powerful feature of Microsoft Power BI. I'll go on to the next graph. The next graph down here is the attendance graph. And here 
we've tried to set up a graph um, that um, shows us the attendance figures. Now I've left this, this particular graph showing just year group 11. Notice how I can choose individual year groups to analyze there and look at the differences between individual year groups. Or I can analyze all the year groups. So now this is an analysis that's averaging out all the year groups in the school and giving us the percentage for EAL pupils, SEN pupils, etc, etc. This graph is also telling us which of those pupils are persistent absentees. So which of the pupils attendance has dropped below 90% uh, for this year. And it's also given us a list of the students, all the students, regardless of whether they're persistent absentees or not. So all these graphs um, are getting, giving us an easy and quick way to get at the actual names of the pupils. If I choose to filter this graph now, and I can filter this graph uh, by a year group, by a registration group, or just by concentrating on persistent absentees. But if I go back to maybe looking at year nine, we can see that perhaps year nine has got some problems because the EAL group within year nine, the SEN group within year nine, the pupil premium group within year nine, their attendance has all dropped below 95%. And you can see I'm using some traffic light colors on here. Green if their attendance is above 95.5%. Yellow or amber here if their attendance is just above 95%, between 95 and 95.5%. And red if their attendance has dropped below 95%. So you can see how we can interrogate these, these graphs to look for specific problems. So compare year 9 with year 10. Year 10 only has a problem with pupil premium pupils, whereas year nine, we have a, a much more widespread problem between those different groups of pupils. And as I said, if I want to identify individual pupils, here's our list of persistent absentees, which is also updated itself. So now it's just giving us the persistent absentees in year nine. And this list of pupils is just giving us the list of pupils in year nine regardless of whether they're persistent absentees or not but it gives us some more information there about them as well so that's the attendance statistics we can also graph behavior statistics as well so this is um, a, a page that reflects the behavior problems that we may have in key stage three and key stage four and this has come again from the sims behavior system uh, and again, we've got a tree map up at the top here, which tells us into which category the behavior types have been recorded. And if I want to focus on one particular um, um, category of behavior, then I can click on it here on the um, tree map uh, visualization and all the other graphs now show me how that particular element of behavior has influenced the number of incidents within the year group and the number of points given to the year group down the side. And again, this particular list of pupils is now just showing me pupils who have inadequate work in class. And we have an average points per pupil for the pupils who've got one of these uh, behavior points against them. So that's how we might show behavior in a school. Let's move on and talk about assessment in the school. And this is one of the um, standard uh, assessment visualizations that we can create and you'll see here that we've got all the subjects that our school offers down the side here with a breakdown of the grades that pupils have achieved the different colors representing the different grades for example this pale blue color representing all the pupils who've achieved a grade five and we set this up to pick out all the uh, one to nine subjects in this case that we offer at key stage four and again, it's interactive. So if I click on these pupils who got a, a five in food and nutrition, now all the other graphs on here just represent these pupils who got a five in food and nutrition. Go back to the list of everybody. And you can see that on this visualization underneath, we're working out what the average grade is for each subject. So rather than giving a breakdown of the grades within that subject, we're giving the average grade for that subject. And at the moment, I'm looking at year 11 autumn term, but if I wanted to, I could look at any of the other terms as well. I could also choose to focus down on particular subjects. So if I'm in charge of the English department, 
I might be particularly interested in English language and in English literature. And I can control and click English language to show both subjects there side by side. And we also have some statistics there that tell us what percentage of pupils got a grade four or higher and what percentage of pupils got a grade five or higher and what percentage of pupils got a grade seven or higher down the side there. So that's an example of a key stage four assessment. Um, there's a more advanced um, assessment if we want to concentrate on one particular subject. Here we're going to concentrate just on maths. Uh, and I'll just take this up to the top level. That's this one. So this is the default view of this particular analysis. Like I say, it's specializing just in maths. And here you can see we've got the individual teaching classes. So we can analyze subjects down to the, certainly down to the class level, down to the teacher level, and also down to the individual pupil level on a visualization like this. So here we've got it at the class level. I can go up a level, and this gives me the average for the whole of the subject. So when we average out all those individual classes, the average grade is 4.6. But if I drill down into that 4.6 grade average, you can see how the averages differ for each individual teaching class. And you can also see the grade distributions given here for individual teaching classes. And if I wanted to, I could uh, drill down a little further. And if I'm particularly interested in this particular class, I can drill into this class. And this brings up the name of the teacher. And if I drill down again, it brings up the names of the individual pupils and handily color codes the grades they've achieved. Go back up again to the top level. So this is how we can analyze uh, by class. And the final sheet I want to show you on this particular um, report is this one. This is again a more advanced um, subject analysis. And here what we wanted to do is compare targets with the actual grades the pupils achieved. The most interesting graph I feel on this particular page is this one. Because this one averages out the results our pupils actually got in year 11, autumn term, and compares it with what they were targeted to get in year 11, autumn term. And you see there's a gap opened up between the actual grades in green and the targeted grades in dark blue there. And this graph suggests to me that we are very good at setting targets for more able pupils who've got a grade five, a grade six, or a grade seven. The average target is more or less the average grade there, but we're perhaps less good at setting targets for our less able pupils. And they're still struggling to keep up with the targets. Also on this graph, we've got a couple of other examples of, 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 of useful visualizations. Down here, although we're using some test data here and the test data is a little bit flat, here we've got a line graph that would hopefully show us a nice upward trend over time because it's averaging the grade in maths uh, term by term. So the average grade in the autumn term, the average grade in the spring term, summer term and autumn term of this year. And in most schools, I would hope that that would show a nice gentle increase term on term. We've also got an example here of a matrix, which a lot of uh, schools find very useful. If we put the spotlight on that, it just focuses our attention on this particular visualization. It's only a small one, but it's commonly used in school. Here we've got rows that represent our low, middle and higher previous attainers at key stage two, and the total number of grades uh, total number of pupils who've achieved each individual grade. So that's another example of some very popular and very useful analyses. And I'll just finish off this demonstration um, by showing you um, what we can do in terms of helping the end user uh, use our resources. We can even put together very interactive help pages like this one um, that um, really sort of um, show the users how they can use these uh, resources most effectively and at the end of the day the most important thing to stress to people is don't worry you can't break anything um, all this is uh, kept um, strictly read only so whatever you do here won't have any effect on the main sims database uh, but it is i think a very very powerful uh, way of analyzing your school data